Nothing, Nothing in life is permanent. Be humble. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. August 13th, 2022. Saturday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is the meaning of this proverb that you recite in the land of Israel? Fathers have eaten green grapes, thus their children's teeth are on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, I swear that there shall no longer be anyone among you who will repeat this proverb in Israel. For all lives are mine. The life of the Father is like the life of the Son. Both are mine. Only the one who sins shall die. If a man is virtuous, if he does what is right and just, if he does not eat on the mountains, nor raise his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, if he does not defile his neighbor's wife, nor have relations with a woman in her menstrual period, if he oppresses no one, gives back the pledge received for a debt, commits no robbery, if he gives food to the hungry, and clothes the naked. If he does not lend at interest, nor exact usury, if he holds off from evildoing, judges fairly between a man and his opponent, if he lives by my statutes and is careful to observe my ordinances, that man is virtuous. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. But if he begets a son who is a thief, a murderer, or lends at interest and exacts usury, this son certainly shall not live. Because he practiced all these abominations, he shall surely die. His death shall be his own fault. Therefore I will judge you, house of Israel, each one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Turn and be converted from all your crimes, that they may be no cause of guilt for you. Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, says the Lord God. Return and live. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands upon them and pray. The disciples rebuked them, but Jesus said, Let the children come to me and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob Our readings lead me to thoughts of who will live in heaven. Ezekiel picks up a theme present in the later prophets, personal responsibility and accountability for what each person does and does not do. 
The psalm is a penitential one seeking forgiveness from God and proclaiming the need for a contrite heart. In the Gospel, Jesus reminds us that the reign of heaven will be made up of the simple and the lowly. Ezekiel, like many of the later prophets, changes the focus of what will enable one to have the life which God intended for each person. The earlier belief that God deals with a whole group of people, or a nation, collectively has given way to the concept that each and every person will be held accountable for his, her individual lifestyle. This does not take away the responsibility of a whole community, social awareness of each other. Those who will live will be the individuals who are faithful to God and treat others fairly. Those who will die are the individuals who are idolatrous, greedy, and uncaring. God wills that all live, that is. To be in a relationship with God, a relation which will endure. God does not want anyone to die, be out of relationship with God. Yet, actions and deeds manifest a person's intention in regards to a relationship with God. Psalm 51 is often heard, especially when the theme is penitential. God is not interested in all sorts of rituals and sacrifices. God desires a loving relationship with individuals. Those who realize their individual sinfulness and seek God with a humbled, contrite heart will have a closer relationship with God. I use the term humbled rather than simply humble because to me it implies that there is an intention to be made humble. It is not just an intrinsic characteristic, but a purposeful attitude. In the Gospel, children are brought to Jesus by their parents. The disciples do not think that the children should bother Jesus, after all they think that Jesus is only interested in those who count, and for the disciples, that means the adults. Yet Jesus invites the children to come to him and tells his followers that the reign of heaven belongs to children and those who have the simple and pure faith of children. I recently heard someone describing Jesus in this situation as being covered with children climbing on him, laughing with the children, and having a great time with them. It is easy for some of us to rationalize what a relationship with God is all about. We think that being a part of the reign of God is really an intellectual experience that is reserved for those who have risen to the level of really understanding God, and, in reality, no one really understands God. It is easy for some of us to consider only people like ourselves are going to make it into heaven. After all, we have the background and have been handed down the faith. This line of thinking leads to the idea that it is too bad for those who are sinners or not as well informed as ourselves, who do not have all the blessings we have. God, however, is reminding us today that the reign of heaven is not reserved for the high and the mighty, whether that be financially, intellectually, or religiously so. The reign of heaven is open to all those who seek to have a relationship with God and live out that relationship by being concerned for others. Those who have a simple, yet pure faith in God are those who will see God face to face. And they will see God in others and treat them as their own sisters and brothers, children of their Abba Father, who happens to be God. The question before me today is, what is my attitude in reference to my being a part of the reign of God? Sometimes I think that I have it made if I work hard at my job, attend church regularly, be friendly to my friends. Yet, I don't always think of how I should be reaching out to the poor and lowly. Sometimes I think I do enough in acting the way I have acted. I am generous to others when I feel like being generous, especially when it is my choice to be generous. I get upset when people seek something from me, 
whether it be the beggar on the side of the street, the person in the white suit outside the market collecting money for this or that organization. The youngster who wants a little more of my time and attention just to watch her slash him do something. I often fail to see that the Lord Jesus may be trying to have a relationship with me through the person who needs my help. The Lord Jesus truly wants me to live, to be in relationship with God. Yet I miss the mark when I am not open to God's self-revelation in the persons who cross my path. God wants me to have a humbled, contrite heart which enables me to experience the divine presence in the everyday moments of my life. Especially through my dealings with the simple and lowly of heart, the personal question or action for today. Do I sense the responsibility and accountability I have for my own actions? Realizing that God has gifted me with faith and salvation, is my life a reflection of the relationship the Lord Jesus has offered to me? What is my view of others who are not on my level, whether they be above me or below me? Am I as caring toward them as I could be? What can I do, what actions can I take, to be a humbled person in my dealings with those who need my attention? Let us pray, blessed are you, Lord, God ever present to us and always wanting want us to live with you. Through your goodness, you give us many opportunities to come in touch with you, in and through the people and events of our daily living. We seek your forgiveness for the times we have failed to see you in the needy and lowly. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, open our eyes to be able to recognize you in the people we meet each day. Help us to follow the example of your Son who welcomed the children and outcasts into his presence and remarked that they were the ones of whom the reign of heaven was made. We thank you and praise you for gifting us with your life in and through the life, ministry, suffering, death and resurrection of your Son. It is in his name that we make this prayer, for he is our Master Teacher, our Savior and Lord who gives us life through his living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa